Sometimes some very simple activities can make a huge impact in your health for the good or the bad. So we're going to talk today about nitric oxide. And uh, you might have heard about nitrates, nitrites. So the story is that you get nitrates from food, uh, predominantly dark green leafy vegetables. So we know those are healthy for us. And then you have to convert that nitrate into nitrite. Uh, and who does that? How does that happen? It happens in your mouth by bacteria. So we talk so much about the microbiome and the 38 trillion organisms in your, in your gut and how they do so many wonderful things for us when they're uh, healthy and anti-inflammatory and they do, they create a lot of ill effects if they're the, the evil kind of microbes and they're pro-inflammatory. Uh, but this is starting right at the start of your digestive tract, which is your mouth. And so the microbes in the bacteria in your mouth actually do this conversion of nitrate to nitrite. So why is that important? Because then you can take that reserve of nitrites and make nitric oxide. So the amount of research that's been done on nitric oxide is amazing. I mean, uh, there's been Nobel Prizes awarded to researchers. Uh, the researcher I was just listening to, he spent you know, two decades of his life doing this. And, and it's a phenomenal compound, um, nitric oxide, but it's a gas. So it literally lasts in your body less than one second. But the trickle down effects of when you create it and what it does is phenomenal. So it affects what's called your endothelium. So that's the lining of your blood vessels. And you want your blood vessels to, of course, pump blood, but also relax enough that you don't have high blood pressure. So if you don't have enough nitric oxide, you have high blood pressure. You can also get diabetes. There's also blood flow to the brain. So dementia and Alzheimer's is involved. What am I leaving out? Oh, erectile dysfunction. So um, for men, the, the artery in the penis is very small. And so it's when a man starts to uh, have erectile dysfunction, it's usually a harbinger of a uh, short time later getting cardiovascular disease. I'm, I'm not going to qu quote the exact number of years, but I recently heard a quote of um, a man gets erectile dysfunction and X number of years later, I think it was around 7 to 15, um, could be having a heart attack because this wasn't handled. Uh, so it's definitely something to pay attention to as far as circulation. So getting back to our nitric oxide, which is a gas and lasts only less than a second, but has these far reaching effects on circulation and the health of the lining of the blood vessels. And getting back to the mouth, we need these healthy bacteria in our mouth in order to convert to the, the nitrites that then make nitric oxide. So uh, what are we doing? What could we possibly be doing that's destroying our oral bacteria? Number one, mouthwash. And I, honestly, I, I kind of was a little surprised, I, you know, I don't watch TV very much, so I, you know, I don't see the commercials, but I remember back when I was a kid, certainly, you know, there was Listerine and various mouthwashes that were, I was like, you had to kill that bad bacteria in your mouth and prevent, um, you know, cavities and prevent gingivitis and all these things. So I just didn't think it was that in vogue, but it turned, I was absolutely wrong. Turns out two thirds of Americans use mouthwash every morning and they're killing the good bacteria in their mouth. Um, another thing that kills it is fluoride. So if you're using fluoride-based toothpaste, you absolutely want to stop because that's killing these bacteria, setting you up for what? High blood pressure, erectile dysfunction, dementia, Alzheimer's, and um, diabetes. So these are very serious diseases and what an easy fix to just stop using mouthwash and change your toothpaste out for a non-fluoride-based toothpaste. And some of you might be going, wait a second, my dentist absolutely insists on a fluoride-based toothpaste. Fluoride is a neurotoxin. It damages your thyroid. Uh, I've, I've never allowed, I never allowed my children to get fluoride treatments. Another insidious um, way that fluoride enters your system is through our water systems. So getting a water purifier will 
take the fluoride out. And the research I was listening to said it's absolutely been documented that um, holding on to your good bacteria provides so much more health benefits than uh, any, any potential um, protection of your teeth that fluoride might provide or mouthwash might provide. So, so the, the, the pros outweigh the cons very much so in this. So tomorrow I'm going to be talking more about nitric oxide. It's a fascinating compound and um, you know it's not something that's easy to measure in humans because it's a gas and you know it's here it's gone you know <laughs> within less than a second it's gone but uh, it's far-reaching effects and what we can do to uh, enhance the production and conversion from the nitrates we're eating to the nitrites uh, and then the body being able to make this gas so the gas doesn't last long, but if you have the ability to make it, of course, you can, you can keep using it and keep having these amazing benefits. So um, I hope you found that helpful. Anybody you know who is a mouthwash user, please tell them about this because um, such a simple thing to, to change, a way to save some money and really enhance your health. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you tomorrow with more about nitric oxide. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want more on this topic and others, click here.